First of all, tell us a bit about who exactly will be on trial. Sure. So um, there are about uh, 20 defendants, um, people that have been involved in the orchestration of these attacks. Um, I think 14 uh, people are going to be there in, in person. They've been uh, remanded in custody, I think. Um, only one of the uh, survivors, uh, or I should say one of the perpetrators, survived um, the police action uh, to terminate these attacks. And of course, uh, there were suicide bombings involved as well. And uh, there'll be some that are tried in absentia, uh, who are based uh, overseas, missing, presumed, perhaps uh, captured or killed as a result of uh, action with uh, the so-called Islamic State and so on. Um, so these are people that are kind of tied up in this broader conspiracy. I think really important, though, that we remember these are not, you know, soldiers on trial. These are not people in charge of some message, but these are people, criminals on trial for their crimes against ordinary people in France and really heinous crimes at that. Let's focus on the victims here. This trial is almost six years in the making. What does this mean for both survivors and the families of the victims? Absolutely. Well, I think that's one of the most important things to remember. There were 130 people killed uh, as part of these you know, horrific attacks. And I think that's really got to be the focus, as well as the many hundreds of people that were injured as well. And I think this idea of how the, the trial will take place, you know, we, we talked already about the idea it's going to be about nine months uh, in total. Um, and much of that will be taken up by witness testimony. And of course, it is really important this trial has been captured on film and also, as you mentioned, broadcast to uh, those families at home who either cannot or will not attend the courtroom um, as, as a result of the, you know, the real difficulties involved. I think it's worth noting the extraordinary bravery of those uh, who are injured, those witnesses um, who are coming forward to testify. And um, this has been an extraordinarily difficult period for them, those that were affected, not just physically, but mentally by these events. Uh, and it's a really important stage, I think, for those people's stories to be heard, but also that this is a, a rational, legal response to horrific violence. I think it's important these civic cases are being rolled in with the criminal cases. And this will hopefully see France seek justice uh, for these extraordinary crimes. I think this will be a, a few trying months for the country as we're going to probably hear periodically trying testimony from, from emerge from this trial. Um, once this ends, people might be tempted to think that this is it, that this chapter is going to be closed for good. But the attacks of 2015 have left, have left a, a lasting legacy on this country, including in some of the laws that were passed to end, for example, the state of emergency. Absolutely. Well, I mean, that state of emergency you mentioned was meant to last uh, 12 days uh, to start with and ended up being at least two years uh, in terms of its length. And of course, that ended after, uh, shortly after uh, uh, Macron's election. Um, but many people spoke about the fact that he only really ended the state of emergency by almost making it permanent. And of course, we then soon after, sadly, entered a state of you know, health emergency at the same time the state declared. But as you mentioned, there was a kind of two-pronged approach to kind of intensifying those anti-terror laws. First of all, we've seen very recently the Loi Sécurité Globale, the global security law, um, which really kind of entrenched police powers. And likewise, the, the very controversial recent passing of the anti-separatism bill, um, which is targeted at ideas of, you know, challenges to those who, who feel other loyalties than to the state. It doesn't immediately name the idea of Islamism within that law, but we can see within that the development, the discussion, the drafting of that law, that it's very strongly at the heart of it. Now, Macron, of course, along with Gerard Darmanin, has, uh, his interior minister, have been very, very clear about their intention to try and tackle ideas of separatism and Islamism, as they call it. And they're very clear they want to distinguish between that and Islam as their religion. Now, many people have said that that can go too far, um, infringing on the rights of ordinary French citizens. But of course, there is this kind of real uh, concern for many people. And this is why this focus on laïcité has really entered into debates, especially after the horrific murder of Samuel Paty, of course, uh, uh, just a very short while ago. Now, it can be difficult to remember all that, but I think we will see more of it as the trial proceeds. And of course, as we move towards that presidential election, ideas of security are always a big topic for discussion. And Macron will certainly see challenges from the right on his approach to that security and want to put up a really, you know, very staunch, strong front in terms of his commitment to France's security. So that legacy is very important. That legacy is, you know, absolutely crucial in France's security law. But those testimonies that we will hear from witnesses, from survivors, is, I think, the most important testament to all of this.